Now, Positively Ernie with Ernie Anastas, a New York TV legend and radio host with great positive stories and interviews. Thanks, Ernie. You're the best. And now, here's Ernie. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the show. Nice to have you here. And, you know, I, I love to cover a wide variety of topics on this program. And the name of the show, of course, is Positively Ernie. So I look for the positive side of things that are going on. Uh, things that are happening in the news, what people are talking about. But I like to look at solutions to problems and finding ways that we can bring out some of the good things that are happening and still dealing with the serious issues of life. And today I want to talk about something that's very interesting. I mean, we all remember, and it's still here, COVID-19. Uh, what a time. Uh, so many experiences that we've all had. And uh, I invited somebody here to the studio today that's absolutely wonderful. I want you to say hi to Sandra Lindsay. Hi, Sandra. Nice to have you here. Hello, Ernie. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. It's a ple And you know what, Sandra? A lot of people uh, who don't know you know, what you do and what you've done are going to find out a great story. Sandra has written a terrific book. It's called First in Line. First in Line. And this is her book. And basically it says how COVID-19 placed me on the front lines of a health care crisis. Uh, Sandra, you were the first, the first to receive the COVID-19 vaccine. First of all, let people know uh, how that came about. I know you're a registered nurse, but explain how that came about. Yeah, Ernie. So as you mentioned, I'm a registered nurse. I work at Northwell Health. Um, I've worked there now for over 30 years in mm. various roles. What a career. Yes. And um, during the pandemic, I served as director of patient care services for the division of critical care at Northwell's Long Island Jewish Medical Center. Right. Mm -hmm. So basically in charge of the critical care division, which is where our sickest patients um, are cared for. And uh, so I've been, I was a vocal um, advocate mm -hmm. for getting vaccinated. Um, I knew that the preventative strategies that were put forward, social distancing, um, wearing your mask, oh, etc., yeah, well. um, were all good preventative strategies, sure. but we needed something stronger, mm -hmm. like a vaccine. So how did you become the first person to receive the COVID-19 vaccine? So I didn't know I was going to be the first person. You didn't know that. I just knew I wanted to get vaccinated. Nice. That was the right thing to do right. for many reasons. And so um, I saw it as leading by example. I was going to ask my staff to get vaccinated to protect themselves and the public. Sure. So I needed, as the leader, to lead by example. Well, I mean, that was certainly covered very well by the press. Yeah. And I'm sure you got a lot of reaction from it. Um, uh, additionally, Ernie, I'll say that as the, the virus spread, um, what I saw were people that looked mostly like me, who were getting infected and dying. Mm -hmm. And I knew that those same people would be less likely to get vaccinated because of mistrust. Mm -hmm. So I also saw it as a act, an act of instilling public confidence. Sure. Sandra, you, uh, we all know that there was a lot of controversy about the vaccine. Uh, uh, many people, like yourself, you know, were in favor and were vaccinated and uh, followed through. There were others who were just anti. And, but the, the most important thing to remember is that it was one of the most difficult times I mean, I was covering the news in New York, and I know the pain that was inflicted on, on not only people in the New York area, but all over the country and all over the world. And I think, you know, and, and I've lost friends. Uh, and when you think about how difficult that time was, we, we kind of like want to forget some of these bad times. But don't you remember every day following the news and the thousands, the thousands of people who were dying and how serious that problem was. Uh, I don't think I'll ever forget that. Never, Ernie. And, you know, I followed the news closely. And every time I would hear about the predictions of how many more people were going to die, I go, what? This is crazy. Mm -hmm. Who are these people? Is mm -hmm. it me? Are they my family member, my friends, my neighbors, yeah. people I see sure. in the supermarkets? Who are these people? Mm -hmm. And, you know, it just became more and more fearful and challenging for me. I will never forget. I still have images of different scenes 
in uh, my critical care units, oh, yeah. where I would I oh, wrote was, about some brutal. of those I mean, in the book. You know, the country had shut down. I mean, you know, the, the world came to a standstill. Um, I, again, I'll, I'll repeat myself that we want to almost forget about all of that, uh, but it's very real, and it happened. And I think even to this day, you know, we have a resurgence. Uh, there's an uptick with COVID, and people are still being very careful and cautious. Uh, it's improved a lot considerably, but we'll never forget those days. Your book now has been out for a while. What kind of reaction are you getting from it? Oh, overwhelmingly positive reactions um, about the book. Um, people just saying they're happy I wrote the book. It's important to tell our stories. Yes. We don't tell our stories enough. Just inspiring, and that's what I hope. I hope to get it in the hands of readers mm. and that it may change the, the path. And, and you know, someone. and you, you talk about a lot of issues, uh, you know, that 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 come about as a result of COVID nineteen in terms of the healthcare system and what we need to do to to improve and make it better. Yeah, I just didn't want to write a story about me and you know my experiences, but to use the book and my platform to just shed a light mm -hmm. on some of the health disparities that led to so many dying from COVID-19, some of those health disparities and inequities that I faced mm -hmm. myself mm -hmm. when I moved here from Jamaica to the Bronx. 1986? 1986. You immigrated here to this country? Yes, I and, did. You know, that's a story in itself, the fact that you came here mm -hmm. pretty much on your own. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you became a student, uh, and that was not easy. You had to really find ways to get your education, and you did it. And went on to have an executive role, you know, with uh, a major healthcare system. Yeah, that was not easy. I came to this country with fifty dollars to my $50. name, I fifty like U.S. Story. dollars wow. to my name, in an apartment, walk-up apartment in the boogie down Bronx. Uh -huh, um, uh -huh. No scholarship, no. I just had a dream. I knew I wanted to become a nurse, and sure. big culture shock and and some setbacks. I worked less than four dollars an hour. 10 hours a day on my feet in a supermarket. I babysat for less than $5 a day. Love this show. Um, you know, I did odd jobs, but I never lost my focus. Sandra, you know, you're describing the American dream. You know, many people who are listening and watching, you know, are saying, you know, I'm, I'm proud of you. Because uh, it takes a lot of courage. It takes a lot of commitment in, in yes. many ways uh, to be able to follow through on that dream. You wanted to be a nurse you had that feeling. Did anybody inspire you for that? Well, I grew up with my grandmother, yeah. my grandparents, right. and my grandmother had a lot of chronic illnesses. Mm. And my siblings and I took turn taking care of her. So in turn, she took care of us. And she thrived. She was an amazing woman. And um, since age nine, I knew I wanted to care for others. And in my country, my homeland, um, Jamaica, nurses are well respected. Mm -hmm. And I remember admiring them in their crisp white and the attention oh, yeah. they commanded. Isn't that interesting yeah. how you have a vision of something? Yes. And it, it can inspire you and trigger you to say, this is what I want to do. Yes. And a lot, a lot of people who are, you know, a lot of young kids, when they see something, it's, it's a role model. Yes. You're a role model. Well, uh, I hope that it, um, after reading this book, yeah. people would want to enter through the profession of nursing. It's, a, it's, it's, a, it's an amazing lifestyle to have that. And, you know, I, I admire any time I have to visit someone in a hospital or wherever it happens to be where they're not feeling well, uh, I really I congratulate the people who are doing this work. These are our heroes. And we know that during COVID-19, they were really top you know, billing. Uh, but I think that, you know, people like yourself who commit to helping others, I mean, w what a wonderful opportunity that is to give back. It's an opportunity and such a privilege. I it consider is. it a privilege for people to entrust their lives to, mm. to us, to right. care for them. It is a privilege. But you know what, Sandra? There, there are many people who probably would like to do that, but they just can't do it. They, they just can't find the, um, the, the ability or, or the, the, the feeling to be able to, to follow through and have that kind of care for other people. That's a very special gift that you have. Well, thank you. It takes, um, you know, determination. It takes focus. It takes resilience. It takes support. 
um, because I did not do this alone. I had, you know, the support of my family and friends encouraging me and pushing me along the way. So um, it's a team effort. Of course, of course. And and you have you have a son. Yes, I do. And uh, you were a single parent. Yes. And tell us about that because you were doing all of this while you were preparing for your career, mm-hmm. going to school, part-time jobs, and taking care of your child. Yeah. So you know, you know, it wasn't a straight path for me. Sure. Um, I got pregnant at age twenty-one, mm. and um, my life changed for the better mm-hmm. because I knew it taught me more responsibility. Because here I was, I was bringing. Uh, life into the world and I was determined that I would be a good role model for my son Mm -hmm. um, which I hope I am I'm sure you are I'm sure you are so but that didn't deter me from going after my dream yeah um that was just something else that I had to navigate Mm. and so I didn't have health insurance I was on Medicaid I went to a clinic I was mistreated, discriminated against, mm, but that beautiful. did not deter me. I have my son, Kadeem. He's wonderful. He's productive. He works a, as a technician at Mercedes-Benz. And he Good has a him. son, um, Avery, who was born on March 4th, 2020, oh. right before the lockdown. Wow. Wow, really? That was yeah. that, that must have been something. It, it that was in something. Itself, what an experience yeah. that had to be during COVID. Absolutely. But... You know, just back to Kadeem, I couldn't have done it without my mom. Mm-hmm. I worked nights mm-hmm. so that she would be there at night to ta- help me take care of yeah. him. And I worked full-time, Ernie, yeah. while going to school full-time right. with my son. Um, so if I can do it, I want to encourage anyone out there listening that you can do it too. You know? And as for <laughs> Avery, um, yeah. I I don't know how I did it because... He was born prematurely, mm. so he spent some time in the neonatal intensive sure, care unit. Sure, yeah. And thanks to those angels mm-hmm. who took care of him. So it was some days on the highway, on the LIE, yeah. um, back and forth to the hospital to see him. And then there was a time where there were no visitors. Mm-hmm. So it was FaceTime with the yeah. parents. So that was very stressful. Sure. De- leading a team during this pandemic mm-hmm. and also supporting my son during his difficult time. Tremendous story. Yeah. Tremendous story. Personal. uh, I mean, you know, I've interviewed so many people over the years, and uh, I can do what they call a quick read because you have to do that many times. If you're going to interview somebody, you have to know how they're going to respond. And you are an exceptional human being. I must oh, say thank that. thank you. No, you really are. Because, you know, uh, when, I, when I talk to someone, I'm looking in your eyes, which is the window of the soul, and I can, I can read the kind of person that you are. And I'm, I'm usually pretty right. But you are exceptional because, you know, you, you've gone through so many different facets of your life. But you have never lost that smile. No. You, you, you haven't <laughs> lost that inner glow. Um, and, and I know you talked about your, your, your mom and how important she was in your life. And now you have an opportunity to be able to be like your mom. And you are in many ways. What do you look for next? You've written this wonderful book. Mm-hmm. You know, you're a mom, you're a grandmother, you're still working in healthcare in an executive role. You understand so much of what's going on. What should we be looking for next? I will continue to serve, continue to make a difference in the lives of others. Um, I've started this initiative called Dignity for All, um, and that is to address uh, period poverty um, issues in my homeland, Jamaica. Mm. So you can look for Sandra to continue to be out there making a difference, um, serving Helping others, uplifting others, Good. inspiring others. Good, I love that. I think that's my purpose. So this initiative, Sandra, is is back in Jamaica. That's where you you started it. Will it continue to grow? Um, it will continue to grow. Yes. That's that's my hope. And this initiative was born out of a service that I went back to Jamaica last year to provide. Mm-hmm. I brought a group of doctors from Northwell. To um, who wanted to volunteer their services to give back to women who were waiting for uh, hysterectomies mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and couldn't afford to pay for it privately. Okay. And so I interviewed all of these women, Ernie, 
and the stories were just so eye-opening, yeah. devastating yeah. about having to choose between purchasing food mm-hmm. and purchasing period products yes. because they were bleeding heavily sure. and being isolated because they couldn't afford the period products to mm-hmm. go to work, to mm-hmm. go out. And I go, wow, mm. I didn't think about this. Wow. Things that we take for granted. You know, walking into a store and you have this whole, you know, aisle of products and people can afford to pick up just about anyone. And so I came back and I decided that I'm going to do something about that. You're such a caring person. I I have to ask you this as I'm sitting here talking. Probably a lot of people would say, tell me, you know, you talked about the inspiration from your mom on a personal level. How do you feel? Are you are you a spiritual person? I am. I I grew up um, going to church, Anglican. Um, We had to go to church and to Sunday school every Sunday morning. And if we couldn't go, then we'd have devotion at home. Mm. So I believe in a higher being. I have faith. Same here. I pray. I begin my morning every morning with gratitude. Mm -hmm. Gratitude. So important. And you know what, Sandra? Um, I I, I really join you in that. And and I I don't try to, you know, to, to, you know, propose anything to anyone. I I feel that we all have a personal choice to make. But I do believe, and I always share this, that there is one creator, uh, a creator of everything uh, on heaven and earth, whatever we see, Mm -hmm. who loves us. And uh, it, basic, basic ideas, you know, like Ten Commandments, just live a good life, yes. take care of other people, be sincere, be honest, be trustworthy, and have love in your heart. And y- you can't go wrong with that. You cannot go wrong with that. You can't go that. wrong with that. It's you the cannot. best thing you can ever have. Uh, one, one last question that I always ask my guests. If you could pass along, and I think I know what you're going to say. If you could pass along uh, a little bit of advice to a newborn child, a newborn baby, that they could hold on to and, and look at it at some point in life when they could understand it and say, gee, you know, Sandra Lindsay gave this to me, and now I think I can understand what this means. What would that advice be, Sandra? That you can be anything you want to be. Stay determined. Stay focused. Most of all, be yourself. Wonderful. Good advice. And, and by the way, congratulations to you because you have received the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Yes, I that have. That was quite an honor for you, wasn't it? It was quite an honor. Didn't know that my life would take on this path. But again, Ernie, um, you know, this is not just for me. This is for so many other people that I identify with. Mm-hmm. Um, immigrants, um, women, uh Healthcare workers, sure. black women, Caribbean women, Jamaican women, um, just everyone. Um, this is for all of us. I well, see this as a celebration of all of us. Well, we honor you. We respect you for what you've done. Continued success. Uh, we've been talking to Sandra Lindsay, who's a registered nurse, and she wrote this book, First in Line. First in Line. She was the first person to receive the COVID-19 vaccine. And she talks about, you know, her experiences. This is a great book. Uh, People will be able to get this online as well. Yes, on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, or wherever you get your books. Absolutely. This is a must-read. Congratulations again, Sandra Lindsay. Thanks for being here. What a pleasure to have you on board. Thank you, Ernie. Keep up your great work. Thank you so much. You're a jewel. (laughs) Thanks. Pleasure (laughs) was mine. Thank you so much, okay? (laughs) Hope you enjoyed the show today, folks. I had a great time talking to her, okay? Come back again. I will. Make sure you do that, all right? We'd like to do that. Thank you for watching. We hope to see you again very soon. Have a great day, everybody, and stay positive.